according to many, the stock market is going through a rotation and this will go on throughout the year, especially if the Fed cut interest rates. What is a market rotation? It is simply that those stocks that are popular today, they are no longer going to be popular among investors. Investors are going to take money out of those popular stocks and invest in other stocks which will then become popular. So those companies that are popular today are the big tech companies, the AI stocks, those companies known as growth companies. But apparently, if there is going to be a market rotation, then it will go to traditional what we call value companies those companies with more stable businesses more stable cash flows but of course growing at slower rate if we have a recession which many is expecting next year then these companies are expected to do better one example i can give you of such companies are going to be food companies because we have a recession or not people are still going to eat and there are free companies that uh, Many are saying are undervalued today. They have been underperforming the market. The first one we are going to talk about is Starbucks. This is the one that is the least resistant to recessions because even though people are still going to consume coffee if we have a recession or not, but if we have a recession, probably they will choose something that tastes better and costs much cheaper. So it is expensive coffee. I don't know why people buy it. But still, the stock is down 40%. People love the brand. They love to take pictures of their name strongly written, so it is going to be here for decades. The main issue according to the market is lower sales in China. In recent years, the company has been expanding in China and today China is where most of their growth is coming from. Of course, if there are lower sales, the growth of the company is going to be low. But if you ignore what analysts are saying, what the market is talking about, and you actually look at the financial statements, you will see that the issue started in 2017. They had a new management, a new CEO, Howard Schultz, the legendary CEO of Starbucks, stepped down second time. He will come back again, but uh, there was someone else who replaced him. And in 2018, they had a deal with Nestle that Nestle would be able to license some of their products and of course pay them. So Nestle paid them $7 billion in cash immediately. Look at the cash flow statement of Starbucks. You will see that they had a big influx of cash in 2018. Of course, this is added as a liability on the balance sheet, deferred revenues, but still it is cash that the company can use to continue to grow. And they have taken a lot of debt since 2018. But what happened? Most of this debt, most of this cash, that is additional invested capital into the business has been burned. You look at the earnings today and the earnings in 2017, there's not much difference. You may say that there was a pandemic. Okay, I agree there was a pandemic. But for every dollar invested, whether it comes from equity, from debt or from retained earnings, you expect that at least in five years, you'll have more than a dollar in earnings. But this is not happening with Starbucks. Now there is a new management. Maybe they are going to do better. I don't know. But it's a turnaround. With the turnaround, you need a catalyst, you need a bigger margin of safety, which I don't see in Starbucks today. McDonald's is a little different. It's not really a restaurant business. It is a real estate business because unlike Starbucks, they also have franchises. McDonald's, they have franchises, but they buy the land and the property and then the franchises are going to pay them rent. You look at the revenues of McDonald's, nearly $10 billion last year came from rent. And this is their main source of income, rent. With McDonald's, it is important to understand some accounting. Since 2015, the revenues have been going down, but that's because of the way that the business was operating. Before, they had restaurants that they completely owned and operated, and then they had the franchises. But they wanted to change this model to increase the number of franchises. With the franchises, it's only the money that is sent to McDonald's, the rent and other royalties, that is counted as revenues. While with the business they own, it is everything they are selling which is counted as revenues. So these are two ways to count revenues. That's why it seemed that the revenues was going down, now it's going up. That doesn't mean anything. It's just a change in business model. Of course, with franchises, their margins are better. But even the assets on the balance sheet is misleading. When they buy real estate, it is put at cost on the balance sheet, but then it is depreciated. Let's say they have owned a property, for 20 years. Of course, it has appreciated in value, but on the balance sheet, it shows a depreciation. They have taken a lot of debt to buy these real estates. It is not true that they have so much debt and nothing to back it. It's not true. They have the real estate. It's just not on the balance sheet. The issue then is that the invested capital for McDonald's is bigger than it seems. 
So if today we are saying that McDonald's has returns on invested capital of 15%, it is lower than that. It is a more capital intensive business than it seems at first sight. It is not a business for me at current valuations. I'm not saying it is a bad business, but they are better businesses for me to invest in. Maybe you might like this company better than me. You want to invest in it, but for me, this is not a business for me. Third one would be Pepsi. And this one seems to be the safest one because they make we know the drinks and Doritos, other things. So these are safe food that people are going to eat, consume, drink for decades. But once you have already conquered the world, which they already did, they were the first American company to sell their products in the Soviet Union. Once you have conquered the world, it is impossible for you to grow at the same rate, except maybe you make acquisitions, which they have done some acquisitions. But to expect that Pepsi over the long term will grow at a fast rate, it is nearly impossible. That doesn't mean that it is a bad investment. A company can be a good investment, even if it doesn't grow. It can be a good investment if you're looking for dividends, but it's not what I'm looking for. When I'm investing in a company, I'm looking to increase the intrinsic value on average by 15%, at least 15% a year. And there are multiple ways that this intrinsic value can increase. The company can grow its earnings over the long term. This is not really the case with Pepsi. It doesn't grow that much. And when companies are growing by 5% a year and you look at the long term rate, when you discount it, it doesn't mean anything. It's only when a company is growing by 10, 15% or more, then it counts. So forget the slow growth of Pepsi. It doesn't mean anything. I know for sure in 20 years that the earnings will be here. Maybe I will invest in another company, it is riskier. The earnings will not be here. But these earnings are not going to grow and the intrinsic value is not going to grow at this rate. And at current price, I don't see a margin of safety enough for me to make an investment. Once again, I'm not saying it is a bad company that you should not invest in it. Maybe for you, what you're looking for in the market, 10% returns is okay for you. Maybe you like the dividends. Please go ahead, make your research. And if you see it's a good investment, invest. It is hard to be able to predict whether there is going to be market rotation. Everyone who tries to predict such things are wrong usually. Nobody a few years ago would have predicted that the stock market would still go up, especially S&P 500, if interest rates go up. They were all expecting that the traditional value stocks I don't like to call them this way, but they were going to go up. But now they are expecting the opposite if interest rates go down. Don't really trust these market rotation things. What usually works is buying great businesses at good prices and holding them for the long term, like I'm doing with this company. Have a nice day and goodbye.